That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Troll, the sixth film directed by Roar Utag, uh, which Netflix premiered December 1st, 2022. The director's name is Roar? Yeah, he's Norwegian. <laughs> I'm not laughing at the name. Uh, do I know Roar's other films? Uh, the Wave was a pretty big deal for him. Also a disaster movie about a tsunami back in 2015. Uh, he's probably best known for the failed reboot of Tomb Raider with Alicia Vikander. Uh, from 2018, which I remember... Failed meaning that it bombed, or failed yes. that it didn't get It made. didn't regenerate uh, interest in Lara Croft. I I agreed to watch this movie because, I, I mean, I like a creature feature movie, but also I had read somewhere, maybe in my head movie, that someone in my head told me that this movie was critically acclaimed. It wasn't me. Well, and I'm sorry to say, I did not care for this thing at all. Oh, it was very dull. You know, it suffers from exactly the same problem of a film from over a decade ago called Troll, Hunt, Troll Hunter uh, from Andre Overdahl, which has these kind of interesting special effects about these large, gigantic trolls, but absolutely no story and nowhere to go. Oh, child, the, the story is so basic that we're in Norway and there there is belief... A troll is living like in a mountain, but it's like frozen in the mountain, so it looks like rocks. And then due to an explosion related to like building a railway, it awakens the troll. And we find out, spoiler alert, that in Oslo, where the king's palace is... Oslo. Oslo. It's... it's the palace is built over the troll king's palace from centuries and centuries ago. So... This surviving troll wants to make its way to Oslo to get back to like its old palace. So it's slowly walking from wherever the hell it was to Oslo, not really fighting anything. The military is kind of trying to fight it, but it's impervious to like the bullets or the weapons they're using. You know, because it's a big rock. Because so finally at the end, the prime minister and the military of Norway decide that they need to use. Um, as George Bush would say, nuclear weaponry. But like every disaster type movie, there's like a little team of specialists outside of the government. And in this case, we have a paleontologist. Yes. Uh, Nora, what is it? Her name? Titawad? Something like T that. Titaman. Nora Titaman, played by Ina Marie Willman, who recently played Sonia Henney for Anna Sawitsky. She, along with the help of her dad, who coincidentally, of course, when they were younger and the dad all this time, had been studying these trolls. So she realizes that the troll, she's the one who discovers the troll just wants to go back to the palace and that direct sunlight will kill it. So she finds a way to stop the military from using nuclear weapons and she gets a bunch of lights, which we can talk about, to kill the troll. So that's the final scene is they turn on all these lights. And then when she sees that it's killing it, she doesn't want to do it anymore, after which was all, so stupid. After all that work. It's like, and then, of course, what happens? The sun comes up and kills the troll. The end. <laughs> oh. We needed the song Here Comes the Sun to play over that scene. But yeah. And then he falls down on this, what, soccer field? But I don't really... <laughs> it is so dull, and the characterizations are so insipid. Can we talk about Nora first? Oh, who's... She's annoying. Looking like... And, well, she annoyed me first off because she looked like Kate Hudson and Mullen oh. Ackerman, who for some reason, I don't know what it is about them. They just brought me the wrong way. So the prime minister and, like, the command center is like, we, we need to find experts to help us with this. And so, like, an assistant to the prime minister flies out. Or no, the military flies out because Nora's character is working on some dig in Norway, she's a somewhere. paleontologist digging up dinosaurs, and so this, the, like these fighter helicopters land and tell her like it's a matter of national security. We need you to come now, and she's like, "Well, I guess I'll stop what I'm doing, digging up old fossils." Girl, get your ass on this helicopter. They bring her back, and the minute she walks in, she has an attitude, and she's talking to these high level people like they're stupid. Yeah, and it's just it. Oh, it was so annoying. It was so annoying. Yes. The her, way she was And then acting. when they reunite with her father, because he knows all about troll lore. And then he's equally as annoying slash now he's crazy. Yes. Uh, it was just a lot. And then she has like a dual romance going on with the uh, prime minister's assistant and this uh, military captain. Who are like exact opposites. And have nothing to do. And have nothing to do. Uh, well, it, it, at least her tastes are broad. But um, so when... 
the first the government detects that there's been some sort of like large scale disturbance in some area and then some person finds out like like they get some footage of like what appears to be a large creature a rock creature yeah and uh, all of this technology they have and they couldn't detect like a whole ass mountain moving I think that needs to be better attenuated. A lot of it needs to, all of it needs to be better. Besides the special effects, because the creature looks great. I know someone's going to be mad about this comment, but when we first see the troll, mm -hmm. both of us at the same time said, I feel like there are men who look like that at the eagle. Yeah, well, I said it first and you were like, oh my God. But, but meaning the troll kind of doesn't look I mean, the if, worst. If yeah. he wasn't made out of rocks, he would, and he didn't have weird teeth. He would he, have a place to go. He would have, yeah, he'd be welcome. Where everybody knows his name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, the, oh God, just there, the action scenes are so weak because the troll is just this big, slow thing moving. And then I think it's funny that the dad ends up getting killed by the troll kicking it. Which happens in slow motion. Yes. And like the dad's not even looking at the troll. And those people aren't even supposed to be along on the mission. So the captain's risking his life or his career for that uh, to have them along. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I need to shout out something I said that I thought was funny that you didn't react to. You said, what kills rock? And I said, paper. And it was crickets. I know that was funny. It was okay. I, Nick is sick. I which am. means I'll probably be sick next week. I'm ill. But... Whatever. All right, I'm ill. I'm going to chalk it up to you being sick that you didn't think that was funny. No, because I meant like what they aren't thinking about alternatives. It's like we got to go to nuclear armaments. Like, no, what else dissolves rock? You don't just shoot at it. Like, what else? Right. Okay, then of course, all of the officials in the command center are taken aback by the idea that this thing could be related to like fairy tales and superstition. There is a whole ass rock creature stomping around and you don't believe the unbelievable? And they're all like, don't call it a troll because you sound crazy, but it's like, okay, you can clearly You know what's see crazy? This, this big ass rock creature I see on the screen. But, and then, you know, of course, the troll mythos is that they eat Christians because... Okay, yes. So somebody's praying and of course he gets eaten. The better story... I think so the troll the troll mythos or lore is somewhat interesting and then we really don't focus on it i feel like the better story would have been something much more subversive where this troll creature i don't have anything against christians but it would have been funny to make it about this creature killing christians and somehow they find a way to reconcile Stop, stopping all these churches or come together I, I think it should have been like a dark satirical it should have comedy. been all every choice that makes so stupid because then oh. they bring these bells on helicopters because literally church bells on helicopters because the trolls didn't like that sound the sound of and then he just things. smashes all the helicopters with the bells again this creature moves in slow you, motion you killed all these people and then it, it takes pains to show him saving a small boy from falling uh detritus like what yeah this whole weak ass military is getting in the way of the slow motion giant and then I didn't understand why the troll saved the little boy from the helicopter falling on him except to show that it has some humanity but in the end it gets killed anyway where she's shouting at him go back to where you came from so then we find out that the king of Norway knows all about the troll and when they show up to his palace he's just waiting outside yeah. He's, and he's like, oh, I was waiting for y'all to show up. I, what? <laughs> of, of course a Tiedemann would show up. Yeah, like, excuse me, your country is going to be decimated. And then he tells this woman that she has her father's eyes. She doesn't have that man's eyes. She doesn't look like that That is man. literally my next note. She does not have her father's eyes. No, he looks <laughs> insane. She has these squinty little Norwegian eyes. So then the king shows her, like, like proof. Me. and. <laughs> And they go into like the subterranean part of the castle and we see that there's like a troll grave with all these big ass skeletons. Again, it, it looked good, those moments. Yeah, but like, it's like, that's more interesting. Let us be in there. My biggest complaint with all these like creature feature disaster type movies is there's always this ragtag group of people with these like repellent personalities yes. that make this entire film seem like a joke. Why can't it just be as like this serious female scientist? You know, the comment the comment that I laughed at that you made was when she's being extremely difficult at one point, you're like, you know what, go go home. We're gonna call Laura Dern. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll call Laura Dern and she could come wrap this shit up. Um nothing is happening, so I found it kind of annoying that the film has all these captions of where they are. Like, yes, the, with, you know, because I don't speak the language, so I'm just like, Hijala, Yala. And then the name of the places are also, like, 
even the English translation is like it's unintelligible very loud, yeah. to me. So it's like, who cares? They're not doing anything. This creature is slowly walking. Um, I don't know what else I want to say. Uh, it was just very dull. The surprise. only funny moment to me of this movie is the prime minister's the, the prime minister's assistant is this really like dorky guy who early on gets very comfortable with Nora like yes. he, like un, like unreasonably so and in the end he tells the prime minister as he's walking away oh like i'm going to be of like a writer now like like he's quitting and when i tell you that lady looked at him like she could not care less yep she smiled and turned around i like, laughed okay. out loud that was it okay. and then of course um it ends with them alluding to there being a sequel no yes. thank you we don't need that nope 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 please don't what do you, what else do you have to say? That, there's nothing to say about this. It's just, uh, it was shot by Yalo Faber, uh, if you need to know. Because I think, again, the look is the best it part of okay. it. It looks okay. And he's, he shot Eric Skoldbjörn's uh, Pioneer, who's a very notable Norwegian filmmaker. Uh, I just don't think this is offering an, anything to anyone. No. Yeah. What would you give it? One and a half. I would give it one and, a half, one and a half out of five. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye.